dots. He looked like a girl in love waiting for an email from her boyfriend. Oh, Karisu, welcome back, guys and girls, to Marsh Gate. She sure likes to attack me for every little thing. Are you really that desperate for attention? Just getting revenge. You're always making fun of me, so I deserve at least this much. Alright, Mayuri, what's up? You know I've been working at May Queen for three months as of today? The other girls threw me a party! I can't believe I've been a maid for three months. Time she flew by. Oh, but don't worry, Mayushi's still Okarin's hostage full-time. That's good to know. I still can't believe you're working in a maid cafe. I mean, you still never cosplay outside of work. Damn, girl. Oh, sorry, sorry, Karisu. Let's see. Uh, where were we at? Despite what you may think, I actually respect you. That's rich. You didn't even say my name right. I'm sorry about that. Karisu lifts her face and stares at me in shock. Well, that's unexpected. You actually apologized. I do apologize, but I can't help it. For my brain has recorded you as my assistant, Christina, and I cannot correct it. <laughs> I'm gonna crack your skull open and stick electrodes in your hi hippocampus. Okay, a major part of the brain. The hippocampus governs memory and spatial navigation. Right after that silly exchange, John Teeter's mail arrives. Alright, let's see here. Greetings, Kuma. Can you tell me exactly how you changed the past? I'd like to verify that what you said is true. Here we go. We sent an email today. It was set to arrive last Tuesday, 170 hours ago. Its contents were the third place winning numbers for the Lotto 6 drawing. The moment we sent the email... The moment we sent the email, my associates who had helped me plan the experiment and watched me send it instantly forgot that any of that had happened. When I checked, I found that the email had vanished from my phone's send history. I know for a fact that it arrived in the past, as my friend bought a Lotto 6 ticket based on information I had apparently given him. The information I had apparently given him. He got one of the numbers wrong, but otherwise it was an exact match. Alright, let's send that to Teeter. See what he says. Who are you talking to? John Teeter. Huh? No way! He's open to discussion as long as you're not trying to troll him and his mail address is public. This is the second time we've exchanged mails. No wonder you keep referencing Teeter's posts. You believe him, don't you? Not entirely, but there are several points in his story I do agree with. Really? I can't see it as anything but fiction. You're curious. Shut up. Very interesting. That's very interesting. From the events you described, it sounds like you did indeed change the past. I suspect that the email you sent changed divergence, if only a little. Bravo! The instant your email arrived in the past, you shifted from your original world line to an ever so slightly different world line. On this world line, you received an email from the future containing the lot of six numbers. You told your friend the numbers, perhaps because you didn't quite trust the email, but your friend got a number wrong when he purchased a ticket. The original email likely disappeared from your send history when the world line changed. All of this makes sense. That's what I've been saying too, this makes sense, but Rintaro's not seeing it. The one thing I don't understand is how you kept your memories of the previous world aligned. Just to be clear, you are telling the truth, yes? That's the thing, like, we're special. We're like super special, we're like a special snowflake. Yes, I still have my memories from before the past was changed, that's the truth. By the way, this is actually the second time this has happened. You traveled 26 years into your past, haven't you experienced something similar? Also, what effect do you think my internet intentional manipulation of the timeline might have? All right, let's send that to Teeter. Kawaii frog, though. Oh. I confirm that divergence is currently 0.57105%. I cannot tell what the value was before you changed the past. This is because I, like your friends, have no memory of the world line before you changed the past. In the case of physical time travel, memories are retained even if the world line changes. That's been proven by my own experience. But in the case of an email like the one you sent, the time traveler changes the past without actually traveling through time. A situation that scientists in my time never even considered. Yeah, that's what it seems, so it's kind of weird to actually call it, you know, time travel, considering we just changed the past, so we suddenly find ourselves in a new present. It wasn't necessary, since the invention of the time machine in 2034 gave us means of physical time travel, so I'm afraid that I may have no idea how to explain the phenomenon you've been experiencing. How exactly do you measure divergence? Where do those numbers come from? Dun. 
The Many Worlds Interpretation. Strictly speaking, I was not being entirely accurate when I wrote that the Everett Wheeler model is accepted in my time. The first functional time machine was completed in 2034. In the two years following that breakthrough, our understanding of the universe's structure grew dramatically. In 2036, scientists proved that the universe is comprised of attractor fields, which describe the extent of world line convergence. This theory was first proposed in 2020. Alright. Sorry, I forgot to answer your question. I have a meter that measures divergence. A reading of 0% divergence corresponds to the world line I originally came from. In other words, it's a subjective, not absolute measurement. This tool can only indicate the current divergence. Okay. So let's reply here. Please explain these attractor fields. How do they affect world lines? Chatting with Teeter, yo. Observing convergence. Put simply, attractor fields are the focal points of world line convergence. Their existence is responsible for pheno phenomena previously known as fate and chance. There's no real point making small changes to a world line. Due to convergence, small changes do not have a lasting influence. Humans who can observe convergence are exceedingly rare. I haven't met anyone with that ability myself, so I'm unqualified to give you an accurate appraisal, but you, Kiyuma, might be one such individual. You might have the power to observe convergence. You might be a one who can guide us to a world line beyond 1% divergence across the wall that divides attractor fields. We are special, so this is why Teeter was confused when we told him that he had been, like, time traveled before, because we could remember it, but nobody else could remember it. Dots. The tone of Teeter's mail has suddenly changed. He thinks I may have some kind of power? First, I feel a sense of pride. Next comes apprehension. Could this be a trap? In the first place, I can't confirm if this is the real John Teeter, and I don't even know if the John Teeter from 2000 was really a time traveler. If Teeter's world line theory holds, then that could explain the supernatural events I've experienced. But this last statement is pretty hard to swallow. As soon as I begin to doubt, all of his words start to smell like lies. That stuff about the IBM 5100 might have been a lie too. A mysterious program code could just be a simple bug. Now that he claims I have special powers, he's starting to sound like some new age con artist. And besides, I don't need Tito to tell me that. <laughs> Carissa jerks at the sound of my laughter. Don't just start laughing like that. It's creepy. <laughs> but I must. He says I have powers. Isn't that rich? You don't have to tell me what I already know, John Teeter. You know why I don't cosplay? My Yushi doesn't want to stand out. I mean, I'm your hostage, right? <sighs> God damn it. I snap my eyes open wide. I raise my phone high to the heavens. My true power. It's the magic eye reading Steiner. Sounds to me like you got a bad case of Chunibuyo. Eh? Eh? Dots, you keep making those anime references, don't you? Dots. Kurisu hides her face in her book. She pretends to read, but I can see from her that. See from here that her R. Arse? Her arse is bright. What? That's just for later. Her ears are bright red. How does she know about Chunibyo? Is she an ad channeler after all? No, that doesn't matter now. I need to reply to Teeter. Sure, let's go. Here we go. What is beyond the wall? White walkers, dude. What will happen when we cross it? He'll die, dude. Future. If we cross the wall, we will have freedom. If we do not, then the dystopia I came from will be your future. In exchange for providing false peace and joy, your masters will stamp out every last vestige of free will. As I said on that channel, my goal is to change that future, and you may be the one to make that possible. Dots. Okay, now it's getting creepy. Is this some new cult? Who is he really trying to con me here? He's also contradicting himself again. The Teeter who appeared in 2000 said he traveled back in time to retrieve technology lost in World War III. Yet this guy's saying he came to prevent the creation of a dystopia ruled by CERN. This guy might be an imposter. Or just no memory of the other time he time travels. I'm fed up so I quit, replying. But just as I'm about to put away my phone. Tch. Another mail comes. Kuma. 
I want you to be the Messiah? If the same thing happens to you again, please contact me once more. That moment will prove that you are the Messiah? Raises the hairs on the back of my neck. What is this? Fear? Disgust? I don't know, but something is very wrong. That is definitely Messiah. Chapter 4, Chaos Theory Homostasis. Homeostasis? Messiah. Noun. 1. In Christianity, a title for Jesus Christ. 2. One who brings salvation to mankind. Savior. 3. One who rescues others from peril. Salvation. Noun. 1. Deliverance from pain and suffering. From the Kojian Dictionary. John Teeter is a fraud! I scream at the absurdity. Darwin Carissa gives me his, give me exasperated stares, but I ignore them. Me, the Messiah? <laughs> Ludicrous! To think that I would save humanity! I am no Messiah. I am the insane mad scientist Hoi and Kiuma, who has walked through fire and bathed in an ocean of blood to escape the clutches of the organization. My desire is chaos and ending. Do you think that destroying the system will bring peace to the world? The answer is no! No, I say! Death to the naive fools who believe such lies. The collapse of authority means that lawless chaos shall reign. <laughs> um, Makisashi, what the hell happened to Okurin? Beats me. A few hours ago, he, he was exchanging emails with John Teeter, and then he suddenly got quiet. And then he started ranting. He's been on like this for half an hour. He's been acting strange all day, don't you think? Agreed. Listen up, lab mems. It's time to resume Operation Urge. Seriously? The manager's still downstairs, you know. Fret not. It's almost closing time for the Braun Tube Workshop. The phone wave doesn't work at night, remember? It's worth a try. We need to figure out how late the phone wave name strip to change works. At the same time, I want to see if the two of you can use D-mails to change the past. What if everybody sends them at the same time? Change the past? That's... I still don't believe in the many worlds interpretation or Teeter's attractor field theory. Actually, I'm starting to doubt them more and more. If we want to know how the world works, we'll have to figure it out ourselves. To do that, we need to experiment. One thing I'm sure of is that the mass disappearance in Akiba is related to the D-mail somehow, as is the strange disconnect between my memories and everyone else's. According to Teeter, I have a supernatural power, the one I call Reading Steiner. My doubts about Teeter's veracity aside, I do need to determine if I am indeed the only person who keeps his memories when the past changes. Change the past to your liking, as long as it's something easy to observe. Preparations for the phone wave name serve to change are complete. Dara's eyes wander to the ceiling in thought. Next to him, Carissa shrugs her shoulders and starts gathering her things. I'm going back to my hotel. Show me a report on today's experiment tomorrow. Hold it! When I grab her by the shoulder, Carissa nearly topples over. Hey, what's your problem? Who's writing that report? You, of course. This is your operation. And if we could, and if we could get a report from the subject too, that would be even better. Carissa glances at Daru. Are you not interested in changing the past? What happened to your eagerness to experiment? <laughs> Did you forget what I said this afternoon? I'm against it. But you were so enthusiastic when we began the experiments. You went along without a single complaint. In your dreams, maybe. I twist my lips into a grin. You're not being objective, Christy. Uh, Celeb Sev. If you're going to correct yourself, at least get it right. You've already performed one experiment. I changed the past. Hey, no fair. Ah, but you were in on it too. But when the past changed, you forgot that it had ever happened. Are you talking about this afternoon? I mean, when you suddenly started asking about the Lotto 6? Exactly. I explained what happened earlier this afternoon. You're not joking, are you? I'm serious. Seriously? One good look at my face and Daru seems to understand I'm not joking. 
Carisi, on the other hand, has a sour look. But she's always like that. Why did everyone else lose their memories? Actually, did everyone else lose their memories? In order to find out, I need them to perform the same experiment. Okay, there's one thing about the past I definitely want to change. Dar is quick to adapt, as always. We've known each other for a long time. He trusts me implicitly. Or maybe he's just being faithful to his desires. What? Are you gonna tell yourself to go on a diet? Ooh! Ooh! I, I would snap, but my fingers are like... Well, sweaty. Lovely. Ooh, he went there! I wouldn't diet even if future me told me to. <laughs> Dara tells me he wants to change the events of the Ferris Cup, Hella May Queen plus Neon Squared, a few days ago. On that day, Dara got insta-killed by Ferris in a Raynet Axis Battlers match. You're gonna change the result? I remember every move Paris Tan made. It'll be easier to take her from behind. Mm. Aren't I a genius? My Yushi won a magazine sweepstakes once. Amazing, huh? You know the hero of Gumbaun, Setsuri? I want an autograph from his voice actor. I never knew Mary was a voice actor of Otaku. Boop, boop. Oh, sorry, Daru, that was awfully rude of me. Kawaii Frog! Hmm, Ferris is probably too good for that to work. She'll just counter his counter strategy. Whatever, Daru. Prepare to demail! But if he changes it, won't, like... Mm, we'll see. Hell yeah! I'll give it my best shot! Daru hunches over and starts typing out the mail, leaving me to input the forwarding address into the phone wave name server to change. So you're gonna tell yourself how to win against Ferris, but you can only send a few letters. Wouldn't you have to, like, condense that into, like... An insanely short mail. If you could attach a picture, that would be amazing though, because then you could like write down stuff and take a picture of it. But I guess that's too many bytes. I sit in front of the X6 D8000 and take a look at my watch. It's 6.55 p.m. No way to know if the phone wave name shift to change will operate at this hour. We haven't figured out the exact window yet. So why do you think you're the only one who remembers? You're awfully persistent. I see why they call you the zombie. I don't follow. Zombies never stop coming. They're persistent. Cut the jokes, I'm serious here. Carissa's glare is scarier than usual. I might have wet myself a little there. I think that the key is who receives the D-mail. Only the recipient himself is able to retain his memories. That would be my guess. That's just wishful thinking, Rintaro. You are special. You just need to come to terms with it. Hmm... Actually, that hypothesis doesn't explain the mass disappearance in Akihabara. Of course, I still don't have concrete proof that the mass disappearance incident was related to D-mail. We'll never know unless we experiment. After... After Dari, you'll send the next D-mail. Think about what you want to write. No. Kurisa replies empath emphatically. I'm not sending one. Scared? That's not it. Then are you worried about time paradoxes? Well, there's that, but it's more like a personal policy. A policy? Changing the past feels like cheating. I may have only have 18 years of life experience, but I don't want to change any of those memories. I see. You're perfect now, so you don't want to change. That's not what I said. I don't want to deny who I've been, because even my failures are a part of who I am today. Which is true. Even if we solved all of the phone wave names to the changes problems, you wouldn't use it? Even if John Teeter said you could use his time machine to travel to whatever time you wish, you wouldn't use it? Even if a blue robot cat from the future were to jump out of your desk and give you a doorway to everywhere, you wouldn't use it? Crusoe nods firmly. I wouldn't. But you love experiments, don't you? Is something wrong with that? So basically, you like to experiment on other people while you watch and cackle at the results. You truly are a mad scientist. Why you... Done! Carissa stalks towards me, but is pushed aside by Daru, who presents his phone with a triumphant grin. I take a look. Yeah, exactly, that's... At Ferris Cup, enemy setup. V-L-V-V-L-V-L-L. -L -L. I don't get it. I guess they're, like, short for what he needs to do, like... Me neither. It's our Ferris time, place your cards, can't you tell? You guys are t lame. Well, whatever. Preparations are complete. If this works, the mail will arrive at Dari's phone 52 hours ago. 
It almost feels like we've been playing this game for 52 hours. <laughs> it progresses so slowly. The discharge phenomenon occurs normally. I close my eyes to shield them from the lightning and sparks. The D-mail was sent. Daru should have received it two days ago. However... Why do I remember? When I sent the D-mail earlier this afternoon, everyone else forgot all about it. If Daru's D-mail changed the past, and the present should have changed too, Daru should be the only one who remembers that he sent a D-mail. I'm gonna guess that Daru won the cup, but he can't remember that he ever sent a D-mail. Oh wait, he does remember! Did the past change? Daru looks around in confusion. Wait, Daru, you remember too? Huh? Remember what? That you just sent the D-mail! Daru nods. Then I turn to Kurisu. She answers before I ask. Of course I remember. What are you... Oh, I see. According to your hypothesis, you and I shouldn't remember sending the D-mail. Daru, did you beat Ferris in the Ferris Cup? Uh, I don't know. You said the winner gets Ferris's home cooking, right? Did you eat it? What happened? I don't know. This sucks. Well, Rintaro, this is the same one as when you sent the mail. You couldn't remember ever giving the numbers to Luca. You had to figure that out. So right now, you need to call up Ferris and ask who won. I checked our send history. As expected, a D-mail he sent. He just sent isn't there. I do, however, find the D-mail in his inbox. He received it two days ago, just like we wanted. This is the same thing that happened when I sent my D-mail. Lukaku. About Raynet. My Yuri chan's obsessed with this anime called Raynet, so I rented it to see what it was about. I usually don't watch anime, but and when I do, I prefer romance, but I found this anime to be pretty deep, even though it's aimed at children. I was surprised. P.S. I was so engrossed in Raynet, I couldn't do any practice moves with Samidare, I'm sorry. Excuses. Romance, huh? That's your problem right there. You can't waste your time with romance fluff. If you have that much free time, then practice with Samidare. Damn it. You did send me a picture, didn't you? What is this, uh picture here. What, what is this? Okay, uh, Reina Kakuru, access number two. On the future, Reina formation. Completely engrossed by the discussion, Kurari and Tamara raise her voices. Just what sort of person is Kakuru? Kakuru is actually a warrior who protects the order of the internet. A net guardian. Oh my god, is he a social, social justice warrior? This is bad. Kirari and Tamaru wanted to tell their friends how cool that was, but Kakuru forbade them due to the risk that they may have to fight with the culprit. At that time, they received news that the mystery hacker Beastman has attacked an online game server. Kakuru immediately challenges him using Nagaya-san's newly made Raynet card and the unique browser AlphaGate. Did she just write the plot to an episode here? <laughs> okay, yeah, you can read, stop, pause that and read if you want to. I have more important things. Maybe the past hasn't changed. I'll try calling Mayushi. He's the one who changed the past, yet he doesn't remember what happened after the change? That's odd. Did you remember what happened after the change? No. Mayushi? You're still at work, right? Is Faris Tan there? She is? Um, can you ask her if I beat her in the Faris Cup? Did I get to eat her? Uh, home cooking, that is? Uh... Who lost? I did. Oh. Barely took five seconds. Oh. Okay. Dar's shoulders droop as he hangs up the phone. I guess that means the past hasn't changed. Why? It changed for Ocarin, right? Maybe your foolproof plan wasn't so foolproof, like maybe it only gave you a slight advantage. I had the same thought. There's no guarantee that what you write to your past self is even going to be like, you know, listened to. Paris is supposedly a world-class player. Daru's time travel cheat may not have been enough. Since Ferris undefeated you anyway, the past didn't change. Yeah, but I mean, the game would have played out differently. That might not be enough to cause world-line divergence. Like Ukaba said, you need to make a change that's easier to observe, or else there's no point to this experiment. Um, not that I approve of this experiment or anything. No, it's not over yet. I can still fight! Daru starts typing another mail. One more time, I'll try sending my past self some more advice. This time something that'll ensure my victory. So if we send it now, does that mean that Daru in the past gets two messages? Or just a one message? 
You really want to win that badly? More like he wants to eat Ferris' home cooking that badly. That's my final answer. Daru writes another D-mail. I don't bother checking what it says. I want to understand anyway. We activate the phone wave, name subject to change, and send the mail through, just like before. Dots. 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 Oh! Nothing happens. No discharge. I guess it's too late. Maybe the clock is past 7 p.m. Can I check the time anywhere? I don't think I can actually check the time, like, exactly. Usually it happens 10 to 20 seconds after pushing the start button. The timer counts down to zero without incident. Out of time? Looks like it. But my advice was perfect! There's nothing we can do about it. We'll postpone the experiment till tomorrow. I check the clock. Yeah, it's just past 7 p.m. Looks like that's the cutoff. After I left yesterday, I was thinking, how exactly does the phone wave make time travel possible? It works like the LHC. Didn't you just say the LHC was like a giant microwave? If every microwave could turn into the LHC, then Japan would have black holes popping up everywhere. Whoa, that sounds worse than earthquakes! I know it looks like CERN is able to create curl black holes willy-nilly, but that's not supposed to be possible. You can't just press a button and make a black hole. Even if you could, the risks would be unthinkable. It's ridiculous to suggest that a household microwave could generate a black hole. Teeter's time machine is small enough to fit inside a car and it makes black holes. Well, that's what he said, at least. Now that I'm a little skeptical of Teeter, I don't feel like bringing it up. My point is that there has to be something else going on here. Some outside source must be injecting electrons into this microwave. An outside source of electrons? Who could that be? Well, I'm going back to my hotel. I've had enough of this filthy man cave. See you tomorrow. Don't forget to write that report. Kuisi flings off her lab coat and hurries out the door. She was serious about the report. Mmm, Makizuchi's lab coat. I wonder what it smells like. As Dara reaches for the lab coat to smell Kurisu's lingering fragrance, I grab him by the neck and pull him down hard. <laughs> Cut that out! If you have time to be perverted, then go think about how to change the past for tomorrow's experiment. We gotta experiment more if we wanna change the past here, guys and girls. And because I feel like we're not really... This, uh, this visual novel takes so long to progress in at the moment, we're gonna make, like, double episodes, like... What are episodes? Ew. If we keep going with 30, we're never gonna get anywhere. <sighs> there wasn't anything to do after Carisu left. I tried operating the phone wave named Shabbat to Change a couple more times before I went to sleep, but the discharge phenomenon simply would not occur. Now it's the next morning, and I'm sitting on the bench in front of the Braun Tube workshop. It's still early, but it's already blazing hot. It's as if I'm baking in the sun. Sweat is dripping off my chin. We're supposed to be experimenting today, but not a single lab member has arrived yet. After waiting impatiently for a while, the first person I see is... Let me guess... Amane. Oh no, it's Mr. Brown! It's Mr. Brown, he is back! He is back, it's Mr. Brown! Yeah! Still waiting. Okabe! Don't you have anything better to do? Good morning, Mr. Okarin. The Tanuji pair come riding in on a moped. How many times do I have to tell you? Call me Kiyuma! Assistant, did you write it? Have you written that report yet? For your information, I wasn't joking yesterday. If you blow this off, then you have right, no right to call yourself a scientist. Maybe this is too much for a freshman like you to understand, but writing papers is part of being a scientist. Let lesser men worry about such things. I have inventions to build and discoveries to make. Do you not get it? <laughs> um, what should I do, Daddy? What nonsense are you trying to feed my daughter? Have you not properly educated her, Mr. Brown? That child of yours refuses to call me by my true name. Please do something about it. Who cares? Don't be so picky. Nay, you don't have to listen to what this guy says, okay? Okay. The manager parks his moped and quickly enters the store. Sister Brown's about to follow him when... Ah! 
She turns her attention towards the end of the street and instantly brightens up. Here comes the man, eh? I follow her gaze and see Mayuri. Oh, it's Mayuri, okay. Mayuri's coming. Good morning, Ogreen! Mayuri! Nei runs up to Mayuri with a happy smile. And without breaking stride, she jumps into Mayuri's chest. Good morning, nei -chan. Good morning! They get along so well that you think they were sisters. Mayuri has the ability to get along with anyone, so it's no surprise. Nei avoids me and Dari, but she adores Mayuri and always goes for a flying hug whenever she gets the chance. Dari sometimes complains about that. What a lucky girl! I wish I could jump into Mayushi's chest like that. I think you'd break her, Daru. No way. Maybe it would be better to have Natan jump into... Dude! His internal debate went on for hours. Okay, that's pushing it. This is for you, Natan. Enjoy! Mary takes some candy out of her convenience store bag and gives it to Nay. Thank you! I have some for Okarin too! She offers me some, which I silently accept. Why are you sitting out here? I'm waiting for lab mems to assemble. Uh, are you slacking off? That's... Why you chipmunk? Do you have to be so blunt? One of these days I'll teach you to respect me! Um, Nechan, I'm sure Okarin's thinking about important stuff. Oh, wow! Good job, Mary. Okarin! Okarin! It's too early to make Phone Wave Chan sparkle right. <laughs> phone Wave Chan? Can I go nuke some yakisoba bread? We removed the door. You can't heat food in it anymore. Oh, right. That makes me sad. By the way, have you had breakfast? Nope. Now let's eat together. We can eat the yakisoba bread cold. Yakisoba bread cold and heat up some canned ramen in hot water. Ramen packaged in a can like a drink. Sold in vending machines. Unlike regular ramen, the noodles are made of cognac. Wanna join us, Nei-chan? I'm okay. I ate. Okay. <laughs> Nei waves and heads back inside the brown tube workshop. Lured by the prospect of canned ramen, I go inside the lab with Mayuri. The stagnant air makes the room hotter than outside. It doesn't improve much even after we open the window and turn on the fan. Darukun and Christian are kinda late, huh? Indeed. Their lack of dedication is appalling. Just then the sound of a braking bicycle comes from downstairs. Somebody's late. When I look out the window, I see part-time warrior arriving. She immediately notices me, looks up and waves. Sup! Do do do, Susu san! If it isn't Sheena Mayuri, do do do! <laughs> they seem to have hit it off. Like I said, Mayuri gets along with everyone. Ukabarin Taro, did you talk to Teeter? Maybe. I thought I dodged that question, but part time warrior is persistent. Come on, you emailed him, didn't you? Yes, but I'm starting to doubt whether he can be trusted. What? Why? What went wrong? Why is she so flustered? Oh, so you're a... Oh, oh, so you're a Teeter Otaku. It's just that Mari removed and so I automatically assumed it was her. I guess there's an Otaku for everything. Look, it's Christian! Mari leans out the window to wave her hand. Oh no, we don't have the report ready. Chris is walking towards the lab. That reminds me, doesn't part-time warrior have something against Kurisu? I look at Sasua, her expression has changed dramatically. Now she's staring at Kurisu in complete silence. She doesn't move a muscle. It's like she's trying to start a fight with her glare. I'm sorry if any of the vacuuming in the background is heard. It's pretty much nothing I can do anything about. If I, if I complain about it, I'm just forced to do it myself at other times of the day, so like, nope. Kurisu's pretty stubborn too, so she meets Sasua's glare for glare. The two of them exchange a word or two in front of the building. For a second, I'm worried that they might start throwing punches, but that doesn't happen. Christian! Doo -doo -doo. Good morning. What did you say to the part-timer downstairs? Kurisu shrugs her shoulders. Nothing much. I told her she wanted to say something, she should just say it. 
I don't think that's nothing. She's lucky that I didn't lead... She's lucky that didn't lead to blows. What did she say? Nothing. She just groaned. I wonder what's wrong with her. She's jealous of Makizushi's popularity, duh! Dari burst into the lab. She's thinking, if only I joined the lab instead of her, then I would be having fun with everyone right now. I'm so jealous, or something like that. I'm telling you, man, 3D is hell. If she wants my lab mem number, she can have it. What? The lab mem number you carry is the highest credential a scientist could hope to achieve. They sell for millions on the black market, but you would give it away? It's not exactly a counterfeit passport. Also, shut up. My Yushi wants everyone to get along. Well, I don't really care about their little quarrel anyway. Only one thing interests me now, the mystery of D-mail. We begin experimenting immediately. Even though it's still morning, the electrical discharge occurs on demand. Hopefully Braun won't be too mad. Things look favorable today. That reminds me, we haven't talked to Mr. Brown yet. Maybe we should come up with an excuse first. To be honest though, I don't care what he thinks. For we are at war, war against the organization and CERN, the dark powers that rule the world from the shadows. Ansai Sensei, I want to eat Ferris Town's home cooking. Is he praying to somebody? The coach from a famous basketball manga. On the internet, posters sometimes express a desperate desire by quoting the manga like so. Ansai Sensei, I want to blank. Another oft quoted line, this one spoken by Ansai Sensei is, if you give up, it's game over. Wow, such inspirational, much wow. If you give up, it's game over! Yeah, there comes the line. Akihabara is such a strange town. Everywhere I look, I see drawings of cute girls. Some of them even have their breasts fully exposed, which startled me. Coming from... Coming here has been a real culture shock. It's amazing how peaceful Japan is now. Okay, you're not used to the hentai? Unfortunately, Moa has become the symbol of Akihabara and the chaos that rules here. Get used to it. Okay. Alright, back to quoting anime, I guess. Boop, 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 boop. Unfortunately, Dari's second email fails to change the past. I get the feeling Raynet matches are difficult to cheat your way out of like this. Let's do another test then. Not to mention we're limited to 36 bytes of text. Looks like we have to give up on Daru. He's gone to drown his sorrows in the internet. Alright, so who do we experiment on? From the look on Carissa's face, I don't think she's willing to change her policy. That leaves only one candidate. Myri, it's time for you to change the past. Eh? Me? Are you sure? But, um, what should I change? Myri looks stumped as she slurps her canned ramen. Oh, I know. I'll make luka -kun wear one of my costumes. How? By sending luka -kun an email. Im imi a male! <laughs> I don't think a simple request is going to change the past. Can't you think of anything easier to change and observe? Hmm... She slurps more ramen. Maybe like ask if they can move something around the room, like... Take that basket in the back and put it underneath the couch and let it stay there. Or something. Let's use that canned ramen. Looks like I'm the only one with that... with ideas. You'll send an email to yourself one hour ago. Type, I want to eat canned Odin, or something like that. I don't think that'll be enough to convince her to... <gasps> oh, that might work! She's very e easily influenced. Eh? When I went to the vending machine today, I spent 10 minutes wondering if I should get canned Odin or canned ramen. It was really hard. So a little push should be enough to make you choose canned Odin. Alright, let's go with that. Okay, but before we change the past, I gotta finish this ramen first. Myri starts shoveling the ramen into her mouth. What happens if you don't finish it? It'll go to waste! Oh, of course. <laughs> Carissa clearly doesn't know what to say. Myri really is a ditz. I'm used to it by now, of course. I get the phone wave, name stubbed to change, prepped for D-mail. The content of Myri's mail is simple enough. Canned Odin, piping hot and delicious! I just hope it actually works. We wait for Mayuri to finish eating her canned ramen, then activate the phone wave, name subject to change. To send it one hour back, we input one... Hashtag. In other words, we set the microwave for only one second. 
I wonder if the discharge phenomena will occur in such a short span of time. That's something else we'll learn from this experiment. Phone wave name shift to change! Activate! Aw, I haven't sent it yet. There wasn't enough time to blink. So one second isn't enough for the discharge to occur. That's what I expected, but it's good to have proof. What if we try warming it up beforehand? Warming it up? One second isn't enough, right? So just run the microwave for about 30 seconds without sending a mail. As soon as it's done, run it again with the timer set at one second. That should cause the discharge, right? Any basis for that? Well, we're just experimenting here. Nope. Damn, Myri. Got anything else? Um, well, we could change the flavor of rice ball I bought last night. Do you remember what kind of rice ball you ate last night? Smoked tuna. She remembers? <laughs> she loves food. How can we observe the change though? Like looking at like the paper you threw in the trash? Impressive. So let's change that to um, fish eggs. Maybe we should find another test subject. Something is telling me we're gonna have to look outside a lab. I go for a walk to clear my head. Let's go grab some random people from the street and ask them if they want to join an experiment. After lunch at... <sighs> wow. After lunch at King Burger, I grab a coffee at the Starbucks on the first floor of Yurubashi. <laughs> Starbucks, a coffee shop chain. Wow, I wonder what that's supposed to be. Uh, I've only ever been to Starbucks once, actually. That's also where I got my first kiss. Uh, good times, man. King Burger, popular fast food burger chain in America. Only a few franchises exist in Japan. Whoopsie daisy. Add laugh track. I left Mayuri and the others at the lab. I need some time to get my thoughts in order. I recall what happened when I sent myself to Lotto 6 numbers. The moment I sent that email, I felt a strong tremor, and in the world as I knew it changed slightly. The fact that I sent the email had been undone. I know that because it had disappeared from my send history. However, it was in my inbox. The mail had definitely reached the past. What does this mean? The mail was received but never sent. Isn't that a time paradox? Not if you send the mail causing you to go into like a new world line. Where you got it in the past, but you still remember that you sent it from the other world line. You still haven't sent it in that world. It makes sense, doesn't it? Or am I just like simplifying it too much and finding reason here? Is that the reason why everyone else lost their memories? Why did that happen? The butterfly effect? That's not an answer. Charging the past. Changing the past changed the world. Teeter spoke of divergence. When divergence changes, are people's memories reconstructed to match the new world line? Then how come I remember the previous world line, even after past changes? My deliberations are interrupted by an incoming mail. Okay. I don't have any time for this. It's a mail, so I can just reply to it later. I concentrate on my coffee. However... All these mails... No doubt about it. It's gotta be Kiryu Moeka, the male demon known as Shining Finger. How could she be so shy in real life and so persistent in email? There's something wrong with that woman. Alright. I sigh and open my mail reluctantly. Can I send a D-mail too? Please? Well, that might actually be a good idea. Let's try that out. Please reply. I'm a lab mem too, right? Pretty please? What? She wants to send a D-mail? That reminds me. Yesterday I made Moeka lab mem 005. She might be able to, like, formulate a text in a good way. That means she's qualified to participate in our experiments. Moeka seems serious, so she might meet my demands. Most importantly, all the other lab mems are completely useless when it comes to D-mails. I still haven't been able to verify whether or not I can keep my memories if someone else changes the past. But wait. I'm worried. Moeka works for an editorial company. In other words, she's related to the media. What if she sends a D-mail and leaks word of the time machine? We'll be flooded by press. Gone will be the days of lurking in the shadows. My location will be exposed to the organization. Of course, sooner or later we're gonna have to announce our findings to the world. But in that case, I'd rather choose a national newspaper or TV network to cover the event rather than some shady magazine. 
Now Wail spread faster throughout Japan. Nay, the world's. Either way, something tells me it's better not to go public through Mueka. I'm a lab mem too, aren't I? However, Loeka is a, is a lab mem. Yesterday, we told her everything about the phone wave, names of the change, and emails. Moreover, we made her one of us. It was necessary to buy her silence. Realizing that I have no reason to deny Moeka her request, I put my phone to my ear. It's me. Yeah, I have some doubts. What? You can tell by my voice? <laughs> you know me too well. So, about whether or not I should include Shining Finger in the phone way named Servit to change experiments. W what? Nonsense! You want me to offer her as a sacrifice? It's true, I, I am prepared to make sacrifices in order to bring chaos to the world, but... No, no, there's no problem. I shouldn't have hesitated. Pathetic. Maybe I'm not cut out to be a mad scientist. Yeah, you might say her offer was a message. No doubt this too is the choice of Stein's Gate. Elsai Kongryu. It's decided. I type a reply to Mueka's mail. Alright, let's do this. Indeed, you are. Lab member 005. Shining Finger, report to the lab at once. Oh yeah. Sending mail. Chicka chick, she's gonna reply within a second. After sending it off, I hurry back to the lab. Now this is gonna get interesting. When I get back to the lab, Moeka is squatting at the bottom of the staircase. Since she's not sitting on the bench, I guess that's crouching while holding her knees in this particular... It's this particular woman's favorite position. She's staring at her phone like usual. Once she notices me approaching, she slowly stands up. But she doesn't look at me. Thank you. For what? That's... I know it's selfish, but I really need to send a email. I don't think you're selfish. In fact, I'm grateful for your offer. Once we enter the lab, I get all the lab members to stop what they're doing and then tell them about Mueka's situation. I think it's a good idea. Mueka-san is a lab mem too. Daru and Kurisu don't object either. Let me just uh, do something here. Let me just get a picture. There, because I could probably use this for a thumbnail, maybe. Gooby! So what sort of mail does Kiryushi Kiryu plan to send? My request is that its contents be simple and easy to measure, so that we can confirm whether or not the past changes. Dots. I'm sorry, there's one more thing. I want to keep my message secret. But how will we know what changed? Why did you have to explain every little thing with the mail? No, more importantly... A secret? What do you mean? What's going on? That's... It's private, it would be embarrassing if anyone knew. But the whole point is knowing what's changed, Mueka! No, that's not the problem. Kurisu peeks at my phone from besides me. Hmm, I see. I understand how you feel, but since this is an experiment, data collection should take priority. Oh, we agree for once, Assistant. I I'm not agreeing with you exactly. If we don't collect data, then we'll never figure out how the phone wave works. <laughs> but girls have lots of secrets, you know? It's like, how do female Pokemon trainers... Where do they keep all the Pokeballs when they're out swimming in the ocean? Hmm... Hmm... You shouldn't ask her to tell secrets, Okarin. That's perverted. Whoa! Is that where we're going with this? Calm down, Daru! God damn it! I turn to Miyuri and Moeka, who appear to have formed some kind of mainstream girl alliance. Ooh, 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 the MGA! We're not asking you to send something private. Krisa nods firmly at my words. Looks like she doesn't intend to join the mainstream girl alliance. Even if you want to send something private, you shouldn't for now. We still don't know how this thing handles paradoxes, so we need to be extremely careful. Nothing private? Nothing you want to keep secret, at least. Even if you mean well, the mail's contents might have a serious effect on the timeline. You should show your mail to a third party and have them check if the contents is problematic or not. Indeed, my assistant said everything I wanted to say. I will add only that the experiment must go on. I wasn't speaking for you. Don't misunderstand. Cheeky little... Experiments prioritize data over privacy in the first place. If you're going to be a test subject, you need to be prepared for that. I agree with you. Don't tell me that's the reason Kurisu won't send a D-mail herself. 
Really? Mayushi wasn't prepared for that. I'm sorry, Chris John. You don't have to apologize. I'm not criticizing you. It's just how these things work. I imagine some people might take issue with that statement, but I'll refrain from saying anything. I'd rather not get my head chewed off right now. That's... Mueka's expression doesn't change. Same as always, I don't know what she's thinking. Dear lab mem, you need to trust us. Save private information for another day. If you can't, then I'll be forced to show you what lies dormant inside the great Hoi and Kyuma. The terrible power of insanity! That's... Mueka is already typing on her phone. My threat was ineffectual, it seems. Like usual. Can I see the emails you've sent so far? I'm gonna use them as a reference. Sure. Well, I can show you my arrival history. And the send history? Don't have one. The send history disappears after you send the email. I confirmed that after I sent the email yesterday. Moika was there, but she doesn't remember either. That's... I don't need to see the history, and I'll show you the message before I send it. Is that okay? Looks like she understands. I showed the mail to Karisu too. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, Moeka-san. Is that supposed to be an encouragement? Maybe you sounds concerned for some reason. So what you gonna send? Okrim wants us to change the past in an easy to measure way, but that's setting the bar way too high. Nonsense. You're all just aiming too low. I have an idea. Mueka murmurs. Oh, this could be good. Give us the details. Mueka then invokes her power once more. Ultrafast typing, the power known as Shining Finger. About four days ago, I bought a new phone, but now that I've tried it, I think I should have stayed with the old one. So I want to use a D-mail to tell myself not to buy a new phone. If we do that, the phone I'm holding will change, won't it? Hmm, most likely, but there's a lot of things that could go wrong along the way. Excellent, Shining Finger! You're a model lab, ma'am! This should make it easier to tell whether the past has changed. Looks like the three useless members have no objections to Moeka's superior idea. We'll look at Moeka's phone. It's purple and gaudy. There's no strap and it's not like the deco phones popular among mainstream women nowadays. A cell phone with decorations on it, primarily popular among young women. Swarovskis or rhinestones can be pasted on the phone's surface for decoration. Oh, that's the GG01 that just came out last month! GG01? The latest model. Pretty sure the screen is detachable. See if you can swap out attachments for it. It's in short supply right now, so you need to be placed on a waitlist. Nice job getting one. That's... It's the most popular model, but she wants her old one back. Then there's probably something about that phone. I guess hardcore phone users have other concerns besides fashion. So, Finger. Uh, why do you kill Moeka-san, Finger? That's the name of her esper power, Kiryu Moeka. I dub the... Oh, that's... Okay, let me do it again. That's the name of her esper power, Kiryu Moeka. I dub the Shining Finger. Use this name with pride. That's... Moeka shakes her head expressionlessly. What? You don't like it? By such a cool name. What's the problem? Moeka-san is Moeka-san. Her fingers don't shine or anything. Don't feed the trolls, Mayushi. I'm not trolling. I'm just naming her power. Cut the chatter and get started. <laughs> Damn it. You're just an assistant. Don't boss us around. Now that is a good thumbnail picture. Boom, guys and girls. Are you all ready to experiment with Moeka's phone? I am. Tune into the next episode to see how it goes. Have a good day, take her, and stay awesome. But the most importantly, everybody, stay dark. Goodbye.